Okay, so with me today is Sensei Donna Blake, and uh, today we're going to talk about Sanchin Dach, that's uh, pigeon toe or hourglass dance. Now, this dance is one of the fundamental stances of Gojuru Karate, and uh, we also use it in Gokan Room, and of course, it's used in a lot of other styles as well. And uh, it's a stance, to be honest, which is more contentious than any other stance. It's a stance that the most people have different opinions on how you should form it. So, so I'll show you how we form it in GKR. First of all, from the front, so if you just want to form Sanchin, please, uh, Donna. So, here we're one, one shoulder width wide, front foot turned in slightly, outside edge of the back foot straight, both knees bent, weight push, push slightly forwards. Okay, now if I get uh, Donna to, now I, before, I, um, before I go any further, actually it's commonly misunderstood that when we say bend the legs, that especially a lot of people call this a groin protecting stance, that they um, erroneously bring their knees in together and touch like that. They think it's a groin protecting stance by, by catching their knees, which is, uh, it is nonsense, okay? So now if you turn this way, now as you can see here, uh, don't you want your toes up there? Okay. The weight in here is slightly forwards. The back leg is not quite straight, but, but pushed to push the weight forwards. Hips are rolled up, so if, if this is the plane of the hips, they're rolled up slightly here to tuck the tailbone in. And one thing here Sensei Donna needs to do is just soften her chest. Now, Steve Rowe um, taught me about softening the chest rather than, rather than pushing the shoulders. And, and what that does is causes a slight straightening of the back here. And uh, turning back the front face. Uh, this stance is uh, commonly used for up close fighting, and it's not really about the dimensions of the stance, it's about the dynamics of the stance. With a lot of stances, the, the dimensions automatically set their dynamics. Now, with this, Sensei should be pushing her feet twisting them outwards like that, gripping the floor with her toes but not scrunching her toes because if there's scrunch not tread on her toes she ends up hurting her toes. And even if they're in even if they're in uh, shoes they're still going to be hurt. So there are a number of philosophies about this stance, whether the upper body should be soft, whether the lower body should be soft, whether the whole body should be firm and strong. And go to traditionally uh, uses his stance in Sanchin Kata, and in Sanchin Kata there's a thing called Shimei testing, and Shimei testing is where you go up to a person and then you, they, they're in a stance and they should be strong, every single part of their body is tense, and then I'll, I'll touch, and then I'll test that the muscles are tense, I'll test that the, that the arms here are strong, they, they, they should spin back when I let them go. I should spin back when I let go. Here, I should be able to punch and say take on, I should be strong. Now, if I push eventually, obviously I'm going to be able to move her out of her stance, but the purpose of this stance is to have a strong sense of connection to the floor. So, any time you see this stance, particularly in Kata, not just Sanchi in Kata, but in, um, in uh, Shisokushin or uh, or, or any of the Goji Katas where you see this stance, it's, it's used in a close up fighting situation. So, if Donna just turn, so, so quite often you see the stance like this, or like this, or like this, and it, it's kind of denoting being in this position here in a grappling situation primarily, and, and you need to strengthen the stance here. So, uh, to, answer the, thank you very much, to answer the questions about whether it should be soft, bottom, top, or the whole thing should be hard. Some people suggest that the leg should be soft and the top should be hard. So, having strong muscles and a hard, hard body is called iron shirt in Chinese martial arts. And it's the idea of the musculature underneath being so, so dense and strong that it's impenetrable. And, and I've even seen monks who are so strong that you couldn't even pierce it with, with uh, bladed weapons. But, um, so, if the legs are very soft, the theory that some people make is that, that you're very flowy, like kind of resilient, but the upper part can still take a punch. So it means a bit like the Aikido, the Aikido principle. Aikido 
um, believes in not meeting force with force, but rather harmonising, way of harmony, that's what my kudo means. So for example, if I, if I hit Sandra Johnny here, she turns, she absorbs the power, she, she deflects the power, she harmonises her, her energy with, with the punch. So if I can punch here, she just allows it to go. So that's the principle behind having a soft legs and a strong upper body, so she can still take a hit, but, but, um, but like a willow in, in a storm, a willow tree, the willow tree doesn't get snapped in a storm because it's compliant. Then the other principle is that you have hard legs and a soft upper body. Now, if you imagine a balloon, if the balloon's very, very tight and you stab it, very full of air, it's going to burst. If the balloon's very, very soft, you know, like a week after Christmas, and you hit it with a, a knife, it's not going to burst so easily. So, so the principle here is that if you're very really soft, again, that compliance, that softness, there's nothing to resist against. Um, now, personally, I disagree with both of those theories, and uh, I much more align my, my uh, beliefs with the original Goju, uh, Goju methodology, which is that the whole body should be strong. And the whole idea here is that you redirect all of your strength through the, through the floor. So, so when you get hit, the, the energy of the, of the blow drops back down into the floor, so you're strongly connected to the floor, and it's kind of, it's, it's more of a principle of an oak tree, you know? There's, there's two ways that you could resist a, a hurricane. There's to be very, very strong and have good roots, or there's to be very, very pliant and blow around, and, and I think that this stance is more the oak tree philosophy than the willow tree philosophy. So here, uh, Sensei Dong has got very, very hard legs, and every bit of my structure is absolutely strong. Hip shoulder, okay. Arms in, strong. Here, so so now if I hit her, she's she's really strong, and it just kind of it's a connection to the floor. That's why it's very important to have the forward weighting in the stance because that's what redirects the force of energy here back down her leg. When she moves forward, traditionally, there's a strong suriyashi, which is a sliding footwork. Uh, this um, suriyashi actually came from, we're going to have to take a suriyashi actually came from, um, from old Japan. It was actually a fashion, fashionable in the uh, late 1800s, I believe. And, and it was uh, this way of walking, both men and women used to do it. If I just do it here, this kind of sliding motion, suriyashi. And um, with that is this, Circling motion as well. Now, um, I would call that mawashi ashi, but uh, you know, perhaps some people still call that sui ashi as well. So, as we move here, we circle the feet in and out. And again, there are opinions about whether or not you should turn that front foot first so that you can pull or whatever. But the important thing here is that as you walk forward, so as you walk forward, the really important thing is not only do you have this sliding motion here, but most important that you pull with the front foot, you don't push with the back foot. So when you pull with the front foot, what that enables you to do is to move forwards powerfully. So you engage your muscles to, to pull and you also use your core muscles to maintain your structure. So if we're in close here and Tintay Jonah needs to move forward strongly now, here she's still got her structure all the time. There's no point in the step forwards where she's off balance. Now she lifts her heel off the ground as she comes forward. What it does is it, the moment it throws her shoulders on balance, she's kind of less balanced there. So important here that as you come forward, that you're pulling, you're not pushing. Now, uh, if you face forward, of Now, in, in the desert countries where they have camels, camels are commonly, commonly referred to as the ships of the desert. And the reason that they're called ships of the desert is as they move forward, as, they, as you ride them, they sway like this. And that is the antithesis, the opposite of what you want to be doing in this stance. You don't want to be allowing your momentum to be going side to side. So the side movement should be minimal. Now, if you start lifting your heel up to push forward, that accentuates that side to side movement. But if you just slide your foot and keep it parallel to the floor the whole time, I was taught in a go to class a long time ago that it should feel as if you have a piece of rice paper underneath your heel and toes. So your heel never rises up and forth, so like you slide forward. So, so as Sensei Donna comes forward now, she's sliding on the floor, 
And again, we, we, have, um, we have two schools of thought about what this front foot should do. Should, should this front foot turn out and then step forward, or should the front foot stay in and you slide forward? Now, personally, I like to think that the front foot should stay in and then you pull because it engages the muscles of the, uh, of the thigh here and it makes it easier to move forward with composure and power. Now, I believe Sensei Donna, you actually prefer to turn it forward, don't you? Uh, what's the reason for that, Sensei? Okay, okay, so, 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 for Sen so, so Sensei Donna's motivation really is, is uh, functional um, in terms of the ease that she can get forward and mine is to do with the... the Okay. Well, what, what I suggest you do then, guys, is that you uh, is that you both try for yourself, you know, to see if it works better with that foot turned in or that foot turned as you slide forward. Personally, I think you'll find it's easier to pull forward. Now, one of the reasons why this stance is often called a groin protecting stance, actually, that's actually very, very good for. It's, it's kind of a compromise stance, you know. It it's, it doesn't have the strength of a longer stance. And it doesn't have the instability of a tall stance, but it, it, it's reasonably good kind of balance between the, between which each, each of those offers. It's um, commonly thought of as, as uh, a groin protecting stance, and one of the reasons why it's very good for groin protecting is the same reason why it's good up close, is it enables you to turn your hips very powerfully. Now, if Sensei Donna goes into Zenkutsu Dach, now this stance is a lot harder to engage the reverse hip. So if she does a Gyakuzuku, that's much more difficult. Now she can get a lot of power into that, but, but that's not the point. The point is it's harder to engage that hip. Whereas if she's in Sanchi Dach, now that enables her to use a very short hip motion, but still deliver an awful lot of power. Now you're probably familiar with Bruce Lee's inch punch. And if you turn those members. And he, the inch punch was quite famous because you punch from here, to there, and he generated a tremendous amount of power. And of course, the, the trick, I'll do it this way. The, the trick is not the distance travelled there, but the amount of hip behind it. So if you watch the inch punch, this only moves an inch, but this moves a huge amount. Now, I can't do an inch punch, but I understand the principle where, where we go here. And what I actually find is that when, when you're up close, you actually want these little short, fast generated hip power here, so that you're delivering a lot of power from a short distance. If you look at if you look at uh, almost every cat, almost every cat works from rapid distance. Okay, so uh Sion uh, Shin or uh, 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 Kurunfa, okay, they all work from up close, even though class you would like to think that we're gonna fight from here, but, but fights happen here in real life. So the ability to generate a lot of power from up close is very important and that's one of the primary benefits I think of Sanchin that not only is it very rooted, relatively rooted, but it enables you to generate a tremendous amount of power from up close by use of these small fast hit actions. Okay, so the ability to generate power here. Also, if um if Sensei Donna is here, her groin is front on, which of course is the worst place for her to be if we're in a, if we're in a, you know, here, that kind of situation. But this stance with the leg back enables her to turn her hip off very easily to protect her groin. So here, uh, so, so if she comes to me with the knee here, I can turn myself off here. It's not a full sanction now, my sanction is turning that way. Sanction back here. It enables me to cover my groin with this leg so that a front knee or a front kick is less effective. So, so you, you know, you can see perhaps where the misunderstanding about the groin protecting stance came in. So, just to go back, I, I guess that Heikadach is the okay, I'm just to this. Heikadach is the uh, the perfect stance for Renzuku alternating punching, but it's not the perfect stance to get maximum power between behind either punch because it's not fully maximising the hips. So to do that, you need a, a, a one-sided stance. So if you step back into um, Sanchi Dach, yeah. so now as soon as the weight's back there, that means that you have more travel from the back hip to the front position. So now, when Tete Donna does a Yakuzuku, now that's more travel there, more weight, mass transit acceleration. Here, okay, more more travel there. So 
I think that uh, kind of covers it. That's probably enough for today. But if you have any more questions, please uh, please post them and I'll, I'll respond to them. Okay, so here's one exercise we can do that reveals the strengths and weaknesses of Sanchin. And it's, it's a game, if you like. But it very quickly reveals to you if your stance is performing the function that you hope it's performing. So what you do is you stand up and sit your partner and the shortest person touches their shoulders to the, their hands to the shoulders of the other person. And that just sets the distance. Now we put our hands together like this. Now we both step back with uh, the same leg, so we both step back with our right leg into Sanchin. So now this is our distance. Now the objective of this game is to make the other person take a step forwards or backwards. So you said if, if I go to push here, Sente Donna can push back, she can move her hands, she can take her hands out of the way, but what she can't do is she can never touch my body. Okay? All she can ever do is push, move, and that would be cheating. Well done, if you enjoyed the whole video. Okay, now I'm going to have to cut that and edit it forever. Okay, fine. Okay, so. When we, when we, when we come out and go fast, we go slow up and use strength. Now, what you'll find about this exercise is that if people derive their forward power from leaning, if the other person moves their hands, they'll step. If the other person derives their power from, from just kind of, uh, just from being too rigid, when the other person pushes, they'll, they'll step back with what you do is transfer the power into my upper body, but I'm not transferring it through my legs. So it's really important when we're here that I learn how to transfer this, this power. Now, whoever's lower, whoever has a lower centre of gravity, or their hammer, if you like, that's their, their um, you know, their centre of gravity. Whoever has a lower uh, centre of gravity already has an advantage in this. So I'm just going to set my stance here, and my objective is to redirect the power from Sente Donna's push down into my back leg and her objective is I find my Sanchin stance is not very good. I'm less happy with it now than I've been in probably five years and I don't think I have a particularly good Sanchin stance so you'll forgive me but um, you know the, the point is made even if the stance is not a great example. But oh, one thing I forgot to mention by the way, the length of the stance is the heel in line with the toes of the other foot, approximately. So, here now, since they're going to push his me, oh, I have come to our heels. <laughs> okay, now, as a person with the long arms, I have more leverage in this direction, but as a person with the lower central gravity, she has the opportunity to lift underneath me, or she's also more grounded. So it also reveals uh, other things, you know, just other basic tactical things about Kumite. For example, if you're throwing, the person with the lowest central gravity wins. For example, if you're striking, the person with the longest lingering uh, reach has the advantage. So here, now, so if we just play for a minute. Okay, that was a long arm advantage. It's put too much effort into it. Okay, that's it. As I push, she pushed, and that, that's kind of a bit like to to uh, to bull elephants just bashing heads. Uh, uh, Overcommitting to the attack. She's too rigid in the legs. I think Sensei Donna has been kind to me there, I guess it's my video, but, but the, the, the fact is that you, it's very, very revealing of your stance, and what you find is as soon as you break the posture, then you are at a big disadvantage. As soon as you overcommit, you are at a big disadvantage. Okay, good, thank you. Hey guys, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please take the time to rate and comment, and it would mean a lot to me if you would subscribe. Thank you.